November 2nd, Assignment 12, The Egg List Hypothesis. The contest was about two months away, right after winter break, so I had to start as soon as possible. I figured, this can't be that hard. I'll just sandwich the egg in a bunch of pillows. But when I started reading about the contest online, things got a little more complicated. The Lancaster County Young Scientific and Minds Organization website is ancient. I'm talking last updated in 2003 ancient so it's hard to invest, navigate, and find all the rules. Issue two, as it turns out, the whole egg drop thing is more than just wrapping up an egg in pillows. Not only do they drop the egg from three stories up, but they also have a point system for things like bounce factor and aerodynamic design. I'm starting to think I should have left this project for Mr. Neely's top students. But then again, $500, $500 that might bring mom back. I made up a list of materials and took it to dad who was in the kitchen again. He's been in the kitchen a lot lately. Well, mom was. Well, mom, she loved cooking. She would blast 80s music and zip between the stove and the cutting board and the oven. Sometimes I would help her, and we'd always end up singing into our spatulas and dancing around to some, some Bon Jovi song. Dad doesn't play music when he cooks. I made a list, I said. Dad turned around, and he had flour spilled all down the front of his shirt, and I snorted, because I didn't think Dad in the kitchen would ever stop being ridiculous. A list, he asked? Yeah, what are you doing? I asked, waving my hands at, a f at the flour mess. He wiped his hands on his jeans, which didn't help since flour coated his jeans too. I'm practicing trying to make grandma's crayon apple pie. It took me a second to realize that by grandma, he meant mom's mom, because dad's mom only cooks Korean food and chicken nuggets, which meant this was the pie mom made for Thanksgiving every year after her mother died the one I always helped her make. I felt very sad all of a sudden. Dad must have noticed because he walked over and took the list from my hand. Eggs, are you baking your own pie? He half laughed at his joke, even though it wasn't funny. Bubble wrap, parachutes, Play-Doh? The Play-Doh was a shot in the dark. It's for school, I said. Ah, he noted and got excited in the embarrassing way parents get when they try to be involved in their kids' lives and also possibly try to distract them from their MIA mother. The egg drop? I remember that. Of course we can pick these things up. What's your plan? I don't really have a plan, I said. I don't feel all that excited about the egg drop anymore. Dad hesitated. Do you want to help me with my pie? I wanted to scream at him for even thinking of taking mom's pie and making it his. But I just said, Thanksgiving's still like a month away. I tried to sound casual, like I didn't care like I was only stating a fact, but my voice wobbled and I could feel my eyes stinging. I wanted to catch all those feelings before they escaped and force them down. I wrapped my arms around myself, crossing them over my chest. It didn't take dad long to morph into therapist dad. Natalie, why don't you have a seat, he gestured to our dining, din, uh, dining table. I stayed standing. Dad went on. I think it might be best for you to see someone outside the family. That way you can talk freely. He looked so lost telling me what to do. That had always been mom's job, bossing us around. And we let her, because she'd always done a pretty good job of it. I held up my list. I have to focus on the egg thing, Dad. The muscles between his eyebrows twitched. Okay, the pie can wait. If we go pick up the items on your list, will you let me schedule an appointment for you to meet with someone? I wanted to tell him no, because the thing was, I didn't have anything to say. He acts like I bottled everything up inside. But really, I'm okay, I'm fine. Yeah, sure, Dad, I said. So we went to pick up eggs, and Dad got distracted pretty fast, asking all these questions about the egg drop, etc., etc., etc. I answered everything and acted all excited. But here's a hypothesis. Adults don't want to know how we're feeling. They think they do, but really, they just want to believe we're okay, because it makes their job easier. Dad and I talked a whole lot about the egg drop list, but we weren't talking. Not really. Apparently, when Dad was a kid, he went through a phase where he only ate chicken nuggets. This information comes in handy when he pesters me to finish my vegetables. Therapist dad, pinched eyebrows, lowered voice, lots of questions, feared by daughters everywhere. November 6, assignment 13, Operation Egg. Twig enlisted herself to help with the whole egg thing. Only rule number one of Twig's help, stop calling it the whole egg thing. It sounds boring, she shouted from up ahead as we biked to her house after school. It is boring, I said. It's for school. Not if I'm helping. 
From now on, we'll hereby refer to it as Operation Egg. Fine. Operation Egg it is. I kind of, it kind of had a ring to it, even if it was a little kiddish. Operation Egg made this feel important. It was important. Mr. Neely had practically burst with joy when I told him I'd chosen the egg competition for my wonderings project, and he allowed Twig to work on it too, as long as we'd investigate different questions. You can both take different approaches to the project, he explained. For example, one of you could study velocity. I call velocity, Twig had shouted, and it had been decided. I still didn't know my own question, but I'd figure that out later. Hey, Natalie, Twig said as we pedaled down the long road that led to her house. Check out my velocity. And then she pumped her fist in the air and her bike teetered for a moment before she leaned forward and pedaled faster, leaving me behind. When I finally made it to Twig's mansion, she was already sitting at the kitchen table. She raised an eyebrow and smirked at me. I've been waiting for ages, she said, lifting her hand to her mouth and fake yawning. But her cheeks were flushed and her chest was rising and falling. Twig's not the best actress, to be honest. Natalie, Twig's mother floated in the kitchen as I sat down across from Twig. I'm not kidding. The woman seems to float everywhere, as if she's too posh to walk like all of us peasants. How lovely to see you. According to Twig, she and her mom had a huge fight in Paris. Twig had insisted on dressing as an evil witch slash candy cane hybrid for Halloween, even though nobody really celebrates Halloween in France. And Twig's mom said she was being embarrassing. Long story short, their trip was a disaster. But the way Twig's mom smiled at me, it was as if nothing bad had happened. She's a better actress than Twig, but I guess she's had more years of practice. Adults are good at pretending. Nice to see you too, I said. And when Twig's mom raised an eye expectant eyebrow, I added, Clarissa? Twig's mom insists that everyone, including Twig, call her by her first name. And how's your family? Clarissa asked. I haven't seen your mom in a while. She works so hard. I bit my lip and tried to nod. I really should give her a call, you know. Us working girls have to stick together. She flashed a smile as my stomach twisted. Mom, Twig said, shouting, Clarissa, at what are you even saying, look? At school, Twig's always crawling around under desks, pretending to be a secret agent spy or something weird like that. When her mother's around, Twig turns into one of those embarrassed, sitcom-type 12-year-olds. When her mother's around, Twig becomes almost normal, and I'm not sure how to feel about that. Okay, okay, Clarissa cleared her throat, faked a smile, and gave a high-pitched, glittery laugh. I have to run to my office anyway. Ask Helena if you want some milk. Twig glared at her mom and gave a little wave goodbye. Clarissa glitter laughed again, and she floated away. When we were all alone, Twig frowned. Sorry about her, she said. If I were Twig, I wouldn't apologize for Clarissa, because at least she was walking around and talking and living, but I kept my mouth shut. Twig knew mom wasn't working anymore, but that was all she knew. The topic was a no, one of those no-go zones. So anyway, Operation Egg Drop, she said in a serious business. What's the plan? I sighed. First dad, now Twig. Everyone expected me to have a plan. I reached into my backpack and pulled out my list. My dad and I bought this stuff a few days ago. Sweet. She took the list from me and read it. Her eyes moved over the items, as if this whole egg thing, or Operation Egg, were one of her games. Soon she would be talking strategy and battle moves and breaking out her dice, just for luck. Play-Doh? I shrugged. I thought it might help. She scrunched up her face and then nodded. Yes, I like it. Basketball? I thought that might help too. Twig laughed, slapping the table so hard the glass jumped. Nobody could laugh like Twig. Why on earth would you think that? My cheeks got hot and my eyes burned, even though this was only Twig, even though she hadn't meant to say anything wrong. I thought maybe I could put the egg inside it, I said. Twig frowned, her tone softened. How? Um, and then she tilted her head and squinted at me like I was her scientific question and she was trying to investigate the answer. And your dad just brought all this stuff for you? He didn't think these items were a little weird? I think he felt bad. I could tell Twig was thinking, wondering what I wasn't saying, but she didn't ask. Twig was good like that. Twig gladly abandoned her original question, something with food coloring and placebo effects. It was boring, she said, because Twig doesn't care for long-term projects. She likes jumping to the next thing. Don't ask.